day six of the trading course, we're going to talk about inversion fair value gaps. And the reason I want to talk about this ICC concept is because I think it's so important when it comes to framing a trade entry or at least get confirmation. I also personally use these inversion fair value gaps to frame a trade entry. So now let's get into the video. We all know how a simple fair value gap looked like. And if you don't know how it looks like, then you go back to, I think, day three of the training course where I explained about this ICT concept. Now, if you know what a fair value gap is, then understanding inversion fair value gaps is going to be very easy. So a normal fair value gap is a free candlestick pattern, as we know, where it forms a gap. And this gap right here is a fair value gap. We know a fair value gap is used to send price higher. And as we can see, this fairly gaps act as support to send price higher, sweeping these relative equal highs, which is buy side liquidity. Now, the price of swept buy side liquidity, we could be anticipating price to reverse, right? So then let's see what happens. And right here, we can see that price reverses and it closes beneath this fair valley gap. And when price closes beneath a bullish fair value gap, that means we can no longer use it as support, right? But then instead of using it as support, we can use it as a resistance or use it for resistance. So let's see what happens. And basically we can see the price reach up into this old fair value gap and then move lower. And this old fair value gap is basically called the inversion fair value gap. So an inversion fair value gap is made when we get a close, a candle close beneath a fair value gap. And then if the fair value gap was bullish, then when we get the close beneath the fair value gap, creating an inversion fair value gap, then the inversion fair value gap is now used to send price lower. So for example, over here, we can see we have a bearish fair value gap. Price closed above the fair bearish fair value gap. Now it is an inversion fair value gap and it's made to send price higher. So then you could actually say it's kind of a bullish fair value gap. And this fair value gap right here, this was a bullish fair value gap as we see price wick down into it and then reach higher. But then when price makes a candle close beneath the bullish fair value gap, and now becomes a inversion fair value gap, meaning it's a kind of bearish fair value gap, and it's now used to send price lower. As we can see, price wick up into this fair value gap or inversion fair value gap, and then now, moves lower as we can see, sweeping sell side liquidity. So that's basically the simple understanding on what a inversion fair value gap is. An example of this inversion fair value gap working, we can see right here that price swept buy side liquidity. And from here we can see we have a bullish fair value gap. Price made a retracement into this bullish fair value gap, but then made a close beneath it. Right after that, the next candle price wig up into the inversion fair value gap and from here use it as resistance. Going lower, sweeping sell side liquidity or these equal lows. So basically we use inversion fair value gaps either as a trade entry or use it as a confirmation. And right here it was a bit of both. That as we can see, the price swept the buy side liquidity. Then the inversion for value gap could be used as a confirmation that price is willing to move lower from sweeping the buy side liquidity, or it could be used as a trade entry. As we can see right here, price reached up into that CE, consequent encouragement. Then you could enter, put a stop loss, or exit the trade when price makes a close above the inversion for value gap. And then you want to target sell side liquidity. A bullish inversion fair value gap would look something like this, where we can see that price made a close above this bearish fair value gap. Then after that, price made a retracement into this bearish fair value gap, which is now a inversion fair value gap. From there, price started to run higher, running out by side liquidity, as we can see. So that's also how we can see that a bullish inversion fair value gap would work. And if you were to take a trade entry based on this bullish fair value gap, then you would enter, exit the trade when price makes a close beneath the inversion fair value gap, 
and then you want to target buy side liquidity. And as we can see, price just runs higher, running out buy side liquidity. A specific thing that I look for when trading these inversion for value gaps is that I like to see a singular inversion for value gap. And what I mean by this is that when we have multiple fair value gaps and price makes a inversion for value gap on one of them, then price could just go up to one of the other fair value gaps and then act as resistance, pushing price lower. But when we have a singular fair value gap that is being inversed, then there aren't really any areas where price is most likely going to reverse from, other than, of course, buy side liquidity, which we're going to target or take profit at that area. For example, here we have a singular fair value gap, as we can see. So let's say we're looking at price this way. So then we have a singular fair value gap. As we can see, we have no fair value gap here, or we have no fair value gap up here. So let's see what happens. And we can see price creates an inversion fair value gap. And currently, there aren't really any areas where price is most likely going to reverse from, other than this fair value gap up here. And this fair value gap up here is, of course, another fair value gap, but it's not really paired with this one down here. So then you could take a trade entry right here if you wanted to, and then target buy side liquidity up here. And then, yeah, you could take profit at the buy side liquidity. And when we are in a trade, let's say we insert here, then I prefer when we either see price take out buy side liquidity or make a retracement up into a fair value gap to put my stop loss at break even. But if we want to take a trade entry, at this inversion for value gap, we didn't really have the opportunity to put our stop loss at break even as when price made the closure above the inversion or fair value gap, creating that inversion for value gap, price already reached up into this fair value gap. So that's something that you have to be careful with as it could be risky that price just wants to reverse from here. But then, yeah, price, when it takes out the buy side liquidity, then we could also put our stop loss at break even or we could just take profit at this high or wait for price reaching a high up here. As we see, price also ran this high. Something that we have to be very careful about when trading these inversion fair value gaps is that when price reaches an important level where a reversal is anticipated, then we ha cannot take a inversion fair value gap that is going in the opposing direction, as then it is going to be very hard as these inversion fair value gaps, which I've experienced, doesn't really work when we're going to trade in the opposing direction of where the trend is. For example, here we can see the price swept buy side liquidity. And then if we move down into the lower time frame and extend this out, we can see that right here, price created a inversion for value gap after price swept that buy side liquidity. Then if we were to take this trade entry, we would enter when price makes a retracement exit the trade when price makes a close beneath this and target buy side liquidity. But what do we see happened? We can see that price made a close beneath this inversion for value gap. So basically price made a reversal from here, moved lower, created this inversion for value gap and then immediately disrespected that. So that's something that we have to be very careful about. And also when price have swept, so let's say we have a uptrend right here, then we have a inversion for value gap right here. And let's say that price makes a return into this inversion for value gap, but it have already reached buy side liquidity or an important level. So let's say we have an important level right here. Then when price returns, when price returns into this inversion for value gap, then we would not want to take it as an important level have already been reached and we could be anticipating this inversion for value gap not to work anymore as then a closure beneath it is more likely. So that is something that we really have to be careful about, both taking counter trends in version for value gaps and also taking in version for value gaps in the direction or in the opposite direction of where we could be anticipating a reversal to occur when price reached that important level.